happiness of giving leads to peace in society. As mentioned earlier, the Buddha gave great importance to social happiness. The focus so far has been on internal spiritual qualities. By demonstrating how people's wholesome mind states are connected to and have an effect on social happiness. The discussion has shown how people's happiness has many aspects, one of which is happiness on a social level. To complete this discussion, we need to also look at those principles pertaining to a more active engagement in society. We can begin by asking the question, when someone feels kindness and wishes to make others happy, or feels compassion and wishes for others to be free from suffering, what is the most fundamental expression of these wholesome mind states? This is connected to a related question. What quality did the Buddha most often speak about in relation to householders? The answer is giving dana, that is generosity. Buddhism begins with generosity. The Buddha presented a threefold practice for lay people called the Three Bases of Meritorious Action, Punya Kiriya Vati, which is paired with the threefold training of the monastic community. Simply speaking, the threefold training, Tiso Sika, is the practice for the monks and nuns, while the Three Bases of Meritorious Action, of Generosity Dana, Moral conduct, sila, and spiritual cultivation, bhavana, comprise the practice for lay people. The first factor of meritorious action is generosity, dana. In all the important groups taught by the Buddha of spiritual qualities pertaining to the general public, generosity is always the first factor. What does this term giving dana imply? It implies that generally speaking for the average person the pursuit, the possession, the division and the consumption of material things are the most predominant activities, the main issues in people's lives. Of all these activities dealing with material things, they merge for the activity of consumption. What is the basic line of thinking, the basic mental preoccupation for most people? Due to the pressure of wanting to survive, people struggle to obtain things for themselves. This repeated thought pattern of trying to get things, to obtain things, eventually becomes habitual. It becomes an underlying tendency of the mind. Yet the pursuit, acquisition and accumulation of things is relentless. People generally do not know what is enough. Moreover, material things are limited in number, giving rise to competition and oppression, which escalates until the whole world is in conflict. The solution to this problem begins with giving, with generosity. At the very least, generosity should be used to offset acquisitive tendencies. But if possible, one should enable, one should embed this quality as a habit, as a natural disposition of the mind. If one only thinks about acquiring things, one will end up exploiting others and one will experience inner turmoil. To balance the act of acquisition, it must, 
essential to your full practice of generosity. Sharing with others is thus paired with the pursuit, acquisition and consumption of things for one's own personal benefit. It is considered the fundamental spiritual quality for lay people and for the well-being of human society. Generosity acts as a foundation for developing higher spiritual qualities. The three bases of meritorious action, Punya Kiriya Vatu, provide a broad outline of such development as generosity, moral conduct and cultivation of the mind. When the Buddha taught lay people whose knowledge of Dhamma was still at a beginning level, he would generally lay a gradual foundation by teaching what is referred to as the fivefold progressive instruction, Anu Pubi Kata. This teaching begins with generosity, Dana, which is then followed by talk on morality. Sila Kata Talk on Heavenly Pleasures Saga Kata The Disadvantages of Sensual Pleasures Kama Ti Nawa and the Benefits of Renunciation Ne Kama Ni Samsa <coughs> Generosity is part of the four principles of service, Sangha Vatu, the virtues making for social integration, generosity, dhamma, kindly speech, Pia Vata, act of service, Attacharya, and even and equal treatment of others, Samantata. Generosity is the first factor in the ten Royal virtues, the Saraja Dhamma, virtues of a ruler, generosity, dana, moral conduct, sila, self sacrifice, pari kaga, integrity, uh, jawa, gentleness, madawa, self control, tapa, non anger, akoda, non violence, uh, we hymns are patience, kanti, and conformity to righteousness. Uh, we wrote the now. Generosity is even the first factor in the ten perfections, parami. The virtues perfected by bodhisattvas, generosity, dana, moral conduct, sila. Renunciation, ne karma, wisdom, panya, effort, vidya, patience, kanti, honesty, satcha, determination, aditana, loving kindness, metta, and equanimity, upeka. Generosity is the first factor in several other groups of spiritual qualities. It is important. Its importance is obvious. Even if one is starving and close to death, it is generosity that may save one's life. <coughs> generosity helps to alleviate suffering and generates happiness in societies that are competitive or oppressive due to the pursuit of personal pleasure. Besides its own inherent benefits, Generosity is also a supporting factor for other qualities, including moral conduct, Shida. The sharing of material things makes it easier for people to maintain virtuous conduct. On a basic level, when people receive things from others, they are less likely to try and seize them through unlawful means. People have varying degrees of moral steadfastness. Some people will not steal from others if they are not truly in need, but if they are destitute they may revert to stealing 
as a way to survive. Generosity, say in the form of charity, can help this situation. Of course, there are some people who have a very weak immunity to immoral behaviour and will try to seize things from others whenever they feel the slightest need. In such cases, one may need to come up with other ways to address this problem. In any case, when there is mutual sharing and caring, the incidents involving theft and violation of others' property will diminish. Generosity thus helps to protect moral standards in society. Generosity is also a support for the cultivation of the mind. Even those practitioners who develop tranquility and insight meditation, Samatha Vipassana, prize the value of generosity. <coughs> the Buddha stated how, in the context of tranquility and insight meditation, generosity is both an adornment of the mind, Jitta Lankara and an embellishment of the mind, Chitta Parikara. <coughs> the practice of generosity and self-sacrifice helps to enhance and beautify the mind. It makes the mind receptive, obliging and intent on goodness. It fortifies the mind, integrates wholesome intentions and prepares the mind for relinquishment. It makes the mind clear, spacious, relaxed and bright. It is conducive to concentration, to mental purification, and to higher spiritual states. The, the delight and happiness of generosity alone is greatly beneficial to one's meditation, to the development of tranquility and insight. For this reason, lay people who have reached a level of awakening are still dedicated to the act of giving and sharing. The term dana encompasses a wide range of meanings, including generosity, charity, liberality, open-handedness, and hospitality. As mentioned earlier, it is the basis for the happy, harmonious society. Generosity is of key significance in Buddhism, both in the Buddhist teachings and in Buddhist history. Here in the Buddhist country of Thailand, one can observe that Thai people give easily, relinquish things easily and are charitable by nature. Giving needs to be done correctly and carefully, however, it needs to be accompanied by wise reflection, by taking precautions against harmful side effects. Moreover, it needs to be integrated with other aspects of spiritual practice. One shouldn't think, I have reached the stage of meditation, I no longer need to participate in giving. This is incorrect. Generosity supports meditation practice. As mentioned above, it acts as an adornment for the mind, enabling one's tranquility and insight meditation to bear fruit. <coughs> Sharing of material gains within the monastic community. So far the emphasis has been on the lay community. Let us turn our attention to the monastic community. Do not believe that the life of the monastic community of the monks resolves, revolves only around formal meditation practice. The terms meditation or dharma practice can either be given a too narrow definition or else their definitions are vague and ambiguous to the point that one sometimes needs to avoid these terms or to use them with care. In fact, every valid activity of a monk can be described as Dhamma practice. 
and anyone, monk or lay person, who engages in proper giving, dana, need accord with this principle of dharma practice. By examining the monk's life in relation to the formal discipline, vinaya, one sees how life is communal, and one also sees how it is distinguished from lay life. The communal life of a monk, which is guided by the formal discipline, is at heart connected to essential Dharma principles, because the gist of the Vinaya corresponds to the Dharma, to principles or teachings of truth. Yet this connection needs to be discerned accurately. The communal life of the monks is based on harmony, which is generated and sustained by way of the formal discipline. As soon as we focus here on harmony, we have immediately linked up with the Dharma. At this point, we can look at those principles which act as a foundation for harmony. A repeated teaching in both the Shutanta Pitaka and the Vinaya Pitaka is that on the six virtues conducive to communal life, Satpratniyadamma, which are applied directly for sustaining the stability of the monastic community. This is a teaching for practical application. For example, one accesses the internal spiritual virtue of loving kindness and expresses it outwardly in daily life. These six virtues are given great importance in the context of monastic community life. Let us review these factors. One physical act of loving kindness, metta kaya kamma, acting out of mutual consideration and cooperation. Two verbal acts of loving kindness, metta ochikama speaking out of kindness and well-wishing. For example, one advises and offers instruction by using polite and courteous speech. 3. Thinking of others with loving kindness, metta mano kamma. To maintain thoughts of well-wishing and concern for others to remain in good spirits. 4. The sharing of gains, satta bogi or Sadhara na bogita to share one's material gains, say of requisites or food, with others so that everyone can partake of them. Sadhara na bogi literally means eating or consuming things as public common goods for the benefit of all. Five, keeping equal moral standards. Sila Sama Nata To keep equal standards in light of the formal rules of conduct, Vinaya. To refrain from making oneself objectionable or disagreeable to one's community. 6. Being endowed with right views along with one's companions, Diti Sama Nata. To return to the subject of generosity, one may ask, since monks do not earn a livelihood, do not seek or accumulate material things, and do not own wealth or property, how were they able to give? Here we won't discuss the gift of Dhamma, Dhamma Dana, which in reference to monks is often paired with the material gifts, Vatu Dana and Misa Dana by lay people. In regard to monks and material things, generosity or the act of giving is represented by the fourth factor of the virtues conducive to communal life above, namely the sharing of gains, satta na bogi. If one overlooks a study of the formal discipline, Vinaya, one will not appreciate the importance that Buddhism gives to people's relationship to material things. 
In the context of monastic life, the Buddha gave great emphasis to the sharing of material requisites. The Vinaya contains key principles and guidelines for sharing gains in a righteous and thorough way. Besides focusing on these matters of material gain, the Vinaya also addresses a system of communal living. Indeed, the sharing of gains is an aspect of communal life. And as stated earlier, the Vinaya is linked with the Dharma, the principle of social harmony, Samagi, which ensures social stability and happiness. If one is to truly understand Buddhism, one's focus should not simply be on the Dharma teachings, which emphasize spiritual qualities. Buddhism is not merely a collection of Dharma teachings, it also includes the Vinaya, which addresses, which address social issues and material concerns. By having a more comprehensive overview, one will get to the heart of the term Dhamma Vinaya.